The Blue Lock project was created to enable Japan to capture its first World Cup win. In essence, this program aims to elevate the Japanese football to world class by creating exceptional players that can take on the world and still excel. As Igo stated, the weapons and abilities Japanese players have are very exceptional locally. However, the moment they are exposed to world class, they become mediocre and second tier. With this in mind, Igo made sure to introduce the Blue Lockers to high caliber world class players. In fact, the best of the best. First, the World Five, who are professional players and top strikers representing the five strongest national teams France, Spain, England, Argentina and Brazil And then the five masters, who actually mark the highest level of professional football So, in today's video we are going to take a deep look into the playing style of each professional player and rank them from the weakest to the strongest but before we do, however, if you enjoy this type of videos and content, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell for more amazing Blue Lock theories and reviews. And now, without any further ado, on with the video. Coming up at number 9. As any ranking list, we gotta start somewhere. And despite being very impressive, I think Dada Silva takes the 9th and last place on our list. Dada is known as the tank and seems to be a very strong and muscular guy which makes his ability and weapon all the more impressive. Despite being a very heavy player, Dada still jumps like a kangaroo, and that strong physique enables him to dominate his aerial battles. Now, I know it's not a point of comparison, but he completely overpowered Aryu in their aerial battles, both in terms of physicality and even jumping ability, and he completely blew him off the water. To put this into perspective, we have seen in chapter 235 and 236, how despite them being evenly matched on the ground, Aiko still boasts superior aerial ability to Kaiser, the new gen 11 striker, and Aiko isn't even close to Aryu in this regard. Hell, even the powerhouse Kunigami can't even beat him in an aerial confrontation. Now, I understand that Aryu is an under 20 player, but this serves as the perfect indicator to the gap between the Blue Locker's current level and world class. And unfortunately, this is the extent of what we know about Dada Silva. Add to that that unlike the other World 5, Tokimitsu did not give any comment on Dada's achievements except being one of the best strikers in the world, which really applies to every player on this list, so let's just move on. Next, Mr. Number 8, Pablo Cavazos, or the baby-faced best free kicker in the world. In complete contrast to Dada Silva, Pablo is a small guy, not that muscular. He actually resembles Naruhaya with added cuteness, something he takes pride in. On the pitch, however, he's nothing but deadly. His first showing was actually a defensive feat, as despite Bachira's insane dribbling technique, he wasn't able to really get past him, and he stayed on him. This is Bachira post-awakening, mind you. And in their second encounter, he stopped Bachira dead very easily, and told him that he lacks variety in his dribble patterns, and he has a limited imagination. Which was the thing that Bachira worked on under Lavinio in the NEL. On offense, however, the babyface is rather scary. First, he seems to have metavision, as he did what Sai was doing in the U20 game, which is passing the ball immediately after getting it, and leaving no room for Isigi and Bachura to press him. This alone takes his stakes high, as we have seen how much OP metavision can be in the Manshine City game. Another thing that caught my eye, and a theory sprouted in my mind, that if it is true, Pablo would be higher on this list which is his shot here, where he seems to have covered his shot behind Bachira and hunted for that shot course, kinda like Baro did in chapter 228. This, coupled with the fact that he is the best free kicker in the world, he could have predator eyes or even a third form of it, that allows him to input the goalkeeper individualities and thus determine the best way to shoot the free kick. Obviously, all of this is speculative, and please take it with a grain of salt. Also, if you are wondering about Predator Eyes and Metavision, and how can they be detected, I have a full video exploring and explaining every eye type in Blue Lock, so make sure to check it out. In any case, for number 7 we have Julian Loki. I know, I know, a shocking ranking, considering he is one of the 5 masters, and is actually the fastest player we have seen so far, even beating Noah and Prince. But before you write your raging comments, hear me out. The more I looked into the World 5 players, the more I realized how they were relaxed and at ease with his speed and talent. 
This obviously does not mean that they can catch up to him speed-wise, but at least they either know how to deal with it or present talent of their own that can be matched, if not more effective than his speed. This made me want to reconsider placing him above the four of them automatically. Our first showing of Loki was in the second selection, in the World 5 vs Rin's team game, where he completely obliterated them with his speed, and actually flexed a little by running purposely around them in straight lines. Rin caught this and went to meet him, but Loki tapped into a faster gear and smoked him. But Pablo and Dara responded in this way, that if he keeps running it would be way too boring, meaning they are well aware of his level and where he stands. Obviously this isn't Loki's best feat, as Team Rin at this point was far too weak. In fact, him being chosen one of the five master is the most impressive thing, which at first glance put him at the door of being at the level of Noah and Snuffy. But I honestly think there are different reasons for him to be chosen. First, the fact that he is only 17. His talent and speed go far in him going professional at a young age, but we have seen throughout the series so far how talent without the right mindset is not enough. And so, Ego has an incentive into choosing Loki to show the blue lockers exactly this. Second, the master strikers are chosen as the best player in their respective leagues, and Loki is the best player in the French league. While being very impressive, La Ligue 1 is not the most competitive league out there and thus players who dominate other more difficult leagues have better showing. Speaking of which, for number 6 we have the top scorer of the Premier League, the womanizer and my favorite World 5 player, Adam Blake. Blake's playing style seems to be a refined and a more focused playing style of Kunigami and Tokimitsu. He boasts an insane physique which he uses to force his way through and score goals, which while being very basic, it is very effective style and oddly flexy. But I know you might be wondering, how does a muscle head get a higher ranking than a MetaVision user or even Loki? Well, the answer is twofold. First, MetaVision is as strong as the information you input, and depending on the player, its effectiveness varies. Like we've seen with Nico and Kaiser having a slightly limited vision compared to Isigi, and we really have no clue of the level of Pablo's MetaVision, as his description statement has nothing to do with it. Second reason, and more importantly, Blake is the English league top scorer. As Isigi stated, football exists for the strikers, and being the top scorer of your league, the most competitive league in the world at that, means the player is a force to be reckoned with. This actually gives me hope for Kunigami, I'm not gonna lie, as Blake's accomplishments speak for the effectiveness of his playing style that is physique oriented. One final thought, Blake being the top scorer of the English league made it really hard for me to rank him in comparison of the two player ranked above him and Loki. So please know that this is my personal take right now based on the information we have. But these four players are interchangeable and are very close in level. Alright, for number 5 we have the dirty fox Leonardo Luna, the prince of Real Madrid. Luna actually was the guy who made me notice that the world 5 aren't intimidated by Loki's speed. As he told Rin when he hesitated, are you that afraid of Loki's speed? You've got tunnel vision from lack of experience. This pushed me to believe that Loki actually doesn't scale above some of these world 5, especially this guy who responded immediately to the situation. He then goes and gives the ball to Pablo so he can forward it to the front line with his insane kicking ability. This proves Luna's insane reading ability. The moment Rin stopped, Luna was there and immediately after taking the ball, he moved it to the front line for a quick counter. He didn't even stop to read the field, which makes me believe, much like Pablo, he possesses metavision. But this is not all. From the little information we've got, we can see that he presents a very deadly technique, which is actually similar to that of Sai and Ren, where he dribbles reactively to what his opponent does. However, I think it is a bit deadlier, because against Ren, the moment he moved his leg, just a tiny bit, Luna was already on the move and flicked the ball there. By the time Rin realized, the ball has already passed between his legs. Honestly, this reminded me of Akashi from Kuroko no Basket, where with his emperor eye, he sees the future, and the moment his opponent moves, Akashi is already responding. Obviously, Akashi is more broken, as I don't think Blue Lock has any supernatural abilities. All Luna did was react fast enough to Rin's leg movement. But also, I speculate that he has an eye ability that enables him to read body language, and that might help him in reacting that fast. Another point I want to talk about is this poster, the cover of chapter 182. 
This is some serious foreshadowing from the writer to when Japan will face Germany and Spain in the World Cup, represented by Kaiser and Luna respectively. I believe this means Kaiser will be the biggest threat in the U20 World Cup, after getting an awakening in the NAL, probably in the PXG game. But obviously Luna is a pro, and so this could be referring to him actually being one of the biggest threats to Japan in the actual World Cup. Well, in addition to the master strikers, if some of them don't retire by the time Isigi is representing Japan's national team, I might be highballing him. But of the five world-class players, this to me makes Luna the guy we need to watch out for the most. Now, I want to end Luna's section with the fact that he is labeled the Prince of Real Madrid, the greatest club in history, which is rather impressive. But also, much like Cristiano and Messi, this puts him in direct rivalry with one of the five masters. Levinio, the ace of FC Barca, Real Madrid's arch-rival. Speaking of which, at number 4 we have the butterfly guy, Levinio the dancer. In design, Levy resembles real-life Neymar, and with a skill set similar to that as well. Levy is a very egoistic player who lives for those moments where he shines like a star. He also thinks he is the best striker and player in the world, even though he is obviously not. But with a childish personality he doesn't care and says he is number one in his mind. Currently he is La Liga top scorer, a feat comparable to that of Blake's. But when we get to his skill set, things really get interesting. Known as the dancer, Levy possesses the deadliest dribbling technique in the world, where by moving the ball around his opponents he forces them to fall in different forms, like they are actually dancing. Which is kinda ironic they call him the dancer, but he makes people dance. He also boasts insane speed, as we saw that Noah couldn't follow him up after he passed him due to Isigi's mistake, which is rather interesting as well. But this marks the end of what we know about Levy. Yes, little information, but insane feats nonetheless. Coming up at number 3, we have the perfect hero Chris Prince. The player currently ranked by FIFA as the world's second best player. And I honestly have a little to say about Prince. He boasts one of the strongest physicality, if not the strongest currently. But not just that, his speed, shooting, agility are all top tier. And honestly the label perfect hero is just fitting, as his stats are just perfect and well rounded. Funny enough, despite his age, Prince is a very passionate athlete, with a playful and a very dreamy personality. But don't let that fool you. Much like Levy, Chris has one of the biggest egos and always aims to be the hero of the game above anything else. In fact, the kid in him was aiming to prove himself versus 17 year olds, where obviously there was no one even close to him, which prompted one of the funniest responses from Noah, and highlighted the difference in their philosophies. Now I would like to state the only reason Chris isn't number 1 or even number 2 with his perfect soccer body is his philosophy. Much like Noah said in chapter 185, you should never have irrational mental blocks when it comes to football, or you will never be on top of this highly competitive world. And unfortunately, Prince despite being a big egoist, he is held back by his irrational approach to football. Something the next two players on our list don't share. So, at number 2 we have the man currently ranked as the world's best, but more fittingly, the best striker in the world right now, Noel Noah. The Terminator of Blue Lock and the idol of many of our beloved characters. Now, much like the case with Chris Prince, and due to their dominant attributes and performances, explaining the top tier players is rather easy. For Noah, he is a player with a unique weapon, ambidexterity. There is he can utilize his right and left side with 100% efficiency. And even though this might not seem that impressive of an ability at first hand, it is actually broken, as we have seen with Isigi and Kunigami, who by just having a secondary weapon, their options increase exponentially and become more dangerous. Stopping Noah means that you have to kill his options on both sides. Something easier said than done, as Noah boasts a physicality very close to that of Chris Prince, but due to him being able to use it on both sides with 100% efficiency, that physicality becomes rather scary. First, his dribbling is open and is not reliant on his dominant leg as he has none. This allows Noah to pick the best route to the goal with no limitations in what we call the machine dribbling. Second, his insane shooting ability with both legs allows him to snatch goal in almost any situation. But I'm gonna say it straight up. The biggest reason why Noah is the best striker in the world is his philosophy. Noah spends every second of every day in his life on the road to be the best. 
he rationally and meticulously think of the best route for him to reach and maintain his position on top, whether be it on the field with his machine-like dribbling or outside of the field with his training, thinking and overall lifestyle. As you all know, Blue Lock is filled with valuable life lessons. And I believe Noah's rational approach to success is one of the most admirable lessons one can learn from this show. In fact, the disparity between Prince and Noah is meant to exemplify that rationality is king. Alright, we reached the number one spot on our list. And I'm sure this comes to no one's surprise that the man himself, the GOAT, THE GOAT, is taking this ranking. The Phoenix Man, Mark Snuffy. With what's probably the saddest backstory in Blue Lock, Mark reigns on the throne of football with terror, even being labeled the overall best player in the world by the man himself, Noel Noah. Snuffy is a tall player with great physique, not as powerful as Prince and Noah, but he holds his own very well. However, he compensates for this with what's probably the biggest mind in football right now. His big brain enables him to read the situation faster than anyone. Employ tactics and designs depending on the situations he read for both attack and defense to fully dominate the field. In designing these patterns, he takes his teammates' weapons, strong points and overall playing styles. Literally, there is no end to the number of strategies he employs. This earned him the nickname of the Master Strategist. Remember when I said Snuffy's physicality is a bit lacking compared to Noah and Prince? Well, what if I tell you that this man's genius enables him to dominate most, if not all, of his physical duels? By employing jiu-jitsu techniques, he turns into a fiend when it comes to ball keeping and retention, beating even Noah and Isigi in a 2v1 duel, something not many players can boast about. This incorporation of a martial art technique into football serves as the perfect example of his philosophy. Much like Noah, Snuffy doesn't have any irrational mental blocks when it comes to being the best. His physicality is not number one? Well, he carved a rational path to overcoming this by learning one of the best martial arts for close confrontations. What can I say, great minds think alike. For Noah and Snuffy, rationality is again king. But if you thought this is all, well, no. To better dominate the field, Snuffy also has metavision. In fact, his metavision is like Isigi's, a subtype that I call adaptive metavision where depending on their reading of the field, they adapt different strategies and utilize different players. But due to the gap in experience, Snuffy's metavision is far superior to that of Isigi's, Kaiser's and everyone else we've seen so far. Overall, with the biggest brain in this series, the strongest metavision and the best dueling ability, Snuffy really reigns on the throne of football with terror, with no one even coming close. And with him recently regaining his passion for football thanks to Borrow, we might see him dethrone Noah in the FIFA annual ranking, but that's a discussion for another video and another day. So this wraps it up for Mark Snuffy and for the video guys. I hope you enjoyed and please let me know if you agree or disagree with my ranking, as well as telling me who is your favorite professional athlete. Until next time, thank you for watching.